we have our final speaker of the week, Kirsten Wickelgren, who will tell us about A1 enumerative geometry. Take it away. So first of all, I, I ask that we all thank the wonderful organizers for this amazing conference. Uh, Tyler, Lewis, Nicholas, Jordy, and uh, Kevin. I would also like to thank Frank. Uh, Frank has been supportive of me and generous with me for years uh, now. Many of the enumerative tools I have access to are inherited from Frank. Thank you. I am uh, truly grateful. I was also a little worried that I was not going to uh, fit in here. I think the largest number I've ever written in a paper is in the hundred thousands. Um, uh, but Frank is a genius at making everybody fit in, and it's been wonderful. Um, so uh, it, it's really a, a pleasure uh, to get to be here. I'd, I'd like to tell you about enumerative geometry, uh, A1 enumerative geometry, um, which uh, takes real enumerative geometry. It's a tool for making analogous results over analogous enumerative results over uh, C and R, and making a more general result over usually a field with very few uh, restrictions um, on the field. And if you'll forgive me, I'd like to advertise a little bit about the how. Um, It can do that, and uh, it, thank you. Uh, got it. Um, uh, so, uh, if you have ever wanted to um, uh, glue or or crush schemes, um, this is your chance. Oh, actually, um, I should. This was. Uh, developed in um, joint work with um, Jesse Cass and independently by Mark Levine. Um, so let's give ourselves um, uh, the um, A1 homotopy theory of Morel and Vavodsky. You want to build some something like schemes. You can take a, a base field uh, K, and you'll build a, um, a category of, of spaces with a notion of homotopy, where you can do things um, like crush and glue. And it'll take both topological spaces, so any topological space will determine a space in here, and it'll take smooth K schemes. Uh, and then, uh, in a very formal way, the entire description of this is that you're allowed, you formally uh, allow colimits. So you allow gluings and crushings. And um, the, uh, these formally added colimits have, these formally added gluings have something to do with some of the gluings you normally do in the sense that if you have a certain kind of cover and you glue the cover together, you get back the original scheme. So this so-called Nisnevich covers, if you had a Nisnevich cover, then um, X is equivalent to the union of, of the UI. And uh, then uh, you set uh, A1 equal, right, there we go, thanks. Um, uh, um, and uh, then you have a, a, a category um, of uh, an A1 homotopy theory of uh, Morel and Vavadsky. Um, the, one of, um, of the theorems about uh, this 
this category, we heard a little bit about it from uh, Thomas, was the um, a degree map of Morel. Morel's made a degree map where homotopy classes of maps from Pn to um, Pn minus one, um, uh, uh, Pn has a cell. Um, if, if you took RPN, it has a cell in every dimension. If you took CPN, it has a cell in every even dimension. But uh, if you crush the CPN minus one at infinity, you get some sort of top cell, the sphere. So this, by all accounts, should be a sphere, and it is. You're now allowed to do this. And Morel shows that the homotopy classes of maps um, uh, from PN over PN minus one to itself has a well-defined uh, degree, which counts the points in a fiber for a finite map, but is no longer an element of the integers. It's an element of the growth and fit group. Um, which is defined to be uh, the group completion. So formally adding negatives um, of isomorphism classes. So like one, uh, negative one is formally the negative of one. And now we're gonna take some other um, uh, objects that we can add and formally say we can subtract them as well. So it's the group completion of the monoid under addition and it's even a semi-ring under tensor product of um, isomorphism classes of symmetric non-degenerate Um, bilinear forms, a beta from some V vector space, V cross V um, uh, to K, since this non-degenerate V is uh, finite dimensional. Um, and over a field, all of these can be diagonalized. So it has generators um, given by the rank one forms. So it's the class of the form k cross k goes to k uh, for a um, in k star, which is the map xy goes uh, to axy. Um, and it has a few relations. And more importantly, it has a lot of invariance on it that mean you can tell if one combination of the generators is equal to another combination of the generators um, in finitely many steps for many kinds of fields and even rings. So. Um, the relations is that if we change basis by changing um, the, the k to b times the k, we get that a is equal to b squared a. Um, we can also uh, um, uh, re um, cha make a, a change of basis and take a plus b is equal to a plus b plus a b, a plus b. Um, and if we take the tensor product of two of these, we get um, multiplication by a b. This implies certain things like a plus minus a is always equal to one um, uh, plus minus one. So if we had some combination of these generators and we wanted to ask a computer if, um, uh, if, if they were equal or not, we'd hit with some invariance on quadratic forms coming from the Milner conjecture. There's an infinite uh, series of them. So there's the rank, which goes from GW of K to the integers. And it takes um, the rank of this beta, V cross V to K is equal to the dimension as the k vector space of V. Um, for k inside the reals or any totally ordered, uh, we have a signature. So over the real numbers, uh, since the only square classes are plus one and minus one, we can make our bilinear form have some number of plus ones and some number of minus ones when we take a matrix. And um, uh, this goes to uh, A minus B. And our degree 
has the agreeable property that if you take C points, then you get this S2N, which is the top cell. And if you take R points, you get uh, SN, which is the top cell. And here's Morel's degree, the A1 degree going to the um, growth and uh, Vit group of K. Let's say K is, is, is in R, so we can take R points. Um, and then the degree of the R points, the topological degree of the R points, will be the signature of the A1 degree. And the topological degree of the C points will be the rank of the A1 degree. Um, there's a whole uh, list of other uh, invariants. Um, the, the second one in a famous list of, of Milner's is the discriminant, which takes the determinant of the corresponding matrix. So it takes this beta, the, the class of the determinant of some gram matrix where EI, EJ um, uh, is a basis. Um, uh, and I think the last um, uh, a fact about growth and fit groups um, I'd like to I'd like to tell you is um, that you can uh, transfer, um, which is like you can choose one out of a out of a field extension. So uh, if we take uh, K and L, a finite separable extension. We have a transfer map from the growth and deep fit group of L to the growth and deep fit group of K, um, which takes a bilinear form over L and to the class of the bilinear form where that same um, vector space is now viewed as a vector space over K, because it's also a vector space over K, and then we apply um, uh, uh, our bilinear form, and then we take the sum of the Galois conjugates, so the trace from Galois theory, so this is the sum over all the embeddings, I'll just say Galois group of G, and the separable extension is from the Galois theory uh, that gives us that this is still non-degenerate if we, when we decompose like that for a, for a separable extension. Um, uh, so uh, we can start to do enumerative geometry uh, in, um, in spaces. And uh, for example, uh, um, if you if if you count the the lines on a cubic surface uh, in in this context, what you what you get is that there are um, fifteen one plus um, twelve minus one lines on any smooth cubic surface. Um, over a field K of characteristic not two. Um, uh, what this means more precisely uh, is the following. So um, Segre distinguished over R um, distinguished uh, between hyperbolic and elliptic lines on a, on a cubic surface. Pardon? You need a oh, I'd love a cubic surface. All right, uh, we we will we will definitely use this. Um, uh, so here's well, let's write let's write the um, distinction on the board, or distinguished um, between hyperbolic. and elliptic lines. 
um, here's the, the distinction. If we have a line L um, inside X uh, smooth cubic surface, um, uh, um, inside P3, uh, then we're going to get a map. Um, from L to the set of planes in P3, linear planes, linear, linear hypersurfaces in P3 uh, containing L. This is a P1, and this is also a P1. And the map is that we take a point P on the line to the tangent space to the cubic surface um, uh, at P. And um, uh, um, uh, so uh, this, let's call this tau. Um, uh, tau is a degree two cover because the intersection of a plane with that cubic surface is something of degree three, but it contains a line. So it also contains uh, degree two. Um, and the, the two intersection points uh, are the, um, the two points on the line that have that plane as its uh, tangent space. So um, tau is uh, degree two. And since we're not in characteristic two, that means it's a Galois cover. So we can let I um, be the Galois group, be the, the, be the generator of the Galois group, i.e. it's the um, involution on L which swaps two points when they have the same tangent space to the surface. Uh, so uh, B, the non-trivial element of the Galois group. <coughs> um, so, I as an involution. I got it. Ah. Uh, so I, I as an involution, so it has two fixed points. Um, implies that the fixed points of I are um, uh, either two K points. or a conjugate pair of points defined over some quadratic extension. <coughs> um, so uh, let's uh, define the type. Um, it's going to be equal to um, a, you know, if, if you've got two k points, just let a equal one um, be the, the a inside k star. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, so then, in so more, pers or actually, uh, uh, this uh, segue, if you're, um, so segue, uh, a equals minus one, then your elliptic. A equals plus one, your hyperbolic. And the geometric interpretation is that the, the fixed points of this involution, so the involution swaps the two points on the line that have the same tangent space. So if you're a fixed point, that's when your tangent space stops moving. So here we have a cubic surface, it's in the room, and um, we can put our line our finger along a line and our palm on, on the surface. And the fixed points of the involution are the points where we pause as our, as our hand goes, goes down the line. Um, so when we take this map from uh, L to, these, to the P1 that is planes, um, this was tau.
Um, what either happens is that you have two real pause points. So you're going along, you're spinning, and um, like here, you paused. Because first you're this way, then you go this way, and then you go this way. So this line has real pause points on, on whichever, which cubic surface is this? That's actually, that's actually the most accurate point. That's the only one I can spin out. So it, 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 it's left. It's right. Awesome. Yeah. So, so but this so what, particular one. This has this has these special points with three lines in each. Yes. And, and and this invariant will see that. If, 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 no, we want to observe that. We'll get the invariant even though it's very standard line. You'll have to tell me about that. Uh, well, you it, 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 you, that. We can we can see that it pauses yeah, it at pauses, real points. It pauses even though it has echo points. Even though it's not a, it's not a good general cubic. Thanks. If you if you never pause like in the elliptic line case, then you have to keep going in the same direction. And it's true that then you will spin all the way around. And so this is also if you're over R, if tau spins, if, you're, if your hand gets all spin twisted up, uh, then you're elliptic. And um, if tau doesn't twist up your hand, doesn't spin, you're hyperbolic. So the precise statement behind the count, 15 bracket 1 plus 12 bracket minus 1, is that if, if you weight the lines by their type um, and their field of definition, then you get um, 15, 1 plus 12 minus 1. Yeah. So the theorem um, version, which is joint work with Jesse Cass, is that um, let x be a smooth cubic surface over a field k. Uh, characteristic not equal to 2. Then when you count with the types, you always get 15, 1 plus 12 minus 1. So it's the sum over L, a line in X of um, the line L, it may have coordinates not in K. And we're going to have to count over all of the ones, including the ones not uh, in K. But we take the, the trace with the type um, um, of, of the line. Um, Um, so um, note that if we apply the rank, each of these was rank 1, so we get 27, 27 lines over k bar. And if k is an R and we apply the signature, It implies a result um, due to, um, well, really more to Akonik Telemann, Finneshin Karlamov, Benedetti Soho, and, and it follows from tables of Segre. That um, three, which is the signature of this, the number of ones minus the number of negative ones, um, is the number of hyperbolic lines. minus the number of elliptic lines equals 3. And here we're using that if the line was actually defined over the complex conjugate, it's uh, contributing. So C lines, lines over C, they contribute the trace form CR of 1. Um, uh, this is uh, 1 plus minus 1 has no signature, so you're only getting something about, about real lines. Um, you, first point out that people always think about R and C, but the, the, the C line is the same scale as C, it's two lines of the complex. Thank you. Um, so if you do this over a finite field, you get something new. 
um, you can apply the discriminant over a finite field. And combining with some uh, classical results that I learned from Eva Bayer Flukiger, um, uh, so let's, let's work K is a, uh, a finite field. Um, uh, and then apply uh, discriminant. And at first, um, Jesse and I had a, um, a condition that is not unnecessary, as was explained to me. So the number of elliptic lines, meaning when your square class is not trivial, because over a finite field, you're either a square or you're not a square, just like over R. So this makes sense. So the number of elliptic lines um, is even. And this is a corollary of this, plus some classical results. Um, uh, that um, uh, appear in a, um, uh, well, that, that was generously explained to me by Ava Bayer Flukiger, and then I got to correspond with, with SARE over email because they have a, a, a paper which has um, a degree of a related map. So this is from an Euler number, which can be translated into a degree, but you can also strip local indices from the same sort of degree and also compute it. And classically, that was computed. And so if you combine those two, um, you get this. And uh, um, uh, um, so, so um, more generally, you can compute uh, d planes on a complete intersection. Um, so more generally, uh, let's let uh, um, x equal f1, fj inside pn, um, sorry, the zero locus of f1 um, uh, through fj, a complete intersection. So the dimension goes down by j, in particular, um, of degrees bi. And we can uh, count um, how many r planes are, are in such a complete intersection. Um, so uh, question, uh, how many r planes um, are and x, um, and uh, um, actually, well, let's just, I'm gonna set up a little bit more notation, if you'll forgive me. There, there's an open problem uh, uh, um, and a, a connection with, with Jonathan's um, uh, talk. Um, so, yeah, let me just uh, set, set up the, the classical um, way to do this. So R, let's let this be the Grassmannian of uh, R planes. in uh, Pn, and let's let the S denote the tautological, tautological bundle. So over the, some R plane, call the R plane W, the tautological bundle uh, makes the fiber being W. So then over here, we have the fiber of this bundle over W, and it is by definition um, W. And then if we want to know R planes, we're taking the zero locus of a section of um, some symmetric powers of the, of the dual uh, tautological bundle. Um, so if we take um, sim uh, di of uh, s dual, um, this is the bundle, it's a vector bundle over the Grassmannian. Um, 
and this is the vector bundle of degree di polynomials on W. So in particular, it has rank um, di plus r uh, choose r. And then if we want to know all of the planes in F, um, we can take a section of this bundle. Okay, so our, our equations are F1 equals F2 equals Fj equals zero. It cuts out, um, it cuts out F. So we're going to take the sum as i goes from one to j of sim di of S dual. It's a bundle on the Grossmannian. And we have a section associated to our equations x, which on the plane w gives uh, f1 restricted to w. That's a polynomial of degree d1 on w. In fact, it's on the whole thing. And then f2 restricted to w. And then fj restricted to w. And we want to know the, the d planes w such that f1 restricted to w is 0, as is the others. So we have that the r planes in x is the zero locus of sigma x such that sigma x of w equals zero. And uh, if you do a weighted count, um, uh, then uh, you'll get uh, the number of ones and the number of minus ones that you need to make the answers over r and c come out right. Then the, the theorem. Um, which is joint work with Tom Bachman, is that um, uh, if uh, uh, X is a degree uh, D1, uh, sorry, a generic, a general, there's an open subset of mm, uh, uh, of such complete intersections, an open subset of polynomials of those, those degrees. Uh, so a general degree D1 through Dj, complete intersection, uh, in Pn, and we expect finitely many solutions, so such that um, the number of equations, uh, that's the rank of V um, equals um, the number of variables, which is the dimension of the de Grassmannian, uh, and an orientation condition, and V is orientable in numbers. Um, the first one is the sum of di plus r choose r um, equals r plus 1 times n minus r. And the second one, let me look it up, the orientability condition you want its determinant to be um, uh, even, um, an O of an even number. So the orientation condition in numbers is uh, sum i equals 1 to j of di over r plus 1, um, di plus r, r plus n plus 1. That's the canonical bundle for the Grassmannian is even. Um, then, uh, when we take a weighted sum of the um, d planes, so w, sorry, not d plane, we're calling them uh, r plane, thank you, um, r plane. Uh, and x of the trace from k of w down to k. And now what we're going to put in brackets, the um, sigma, it's a section of a line bundle. We can choose local coordinates. So then there's the, you know, Grassmannians have nice um, affine coordinates. And then we, we choose local trivializations for the dual uh, symmetric powers of the dual uh, tautological bundle. And then we can take the, those are some functions, and we take their derivatives. And we take the, all of those functions and derivatives in all of the directions, and that's the Jacobian. And we take the determinant. So we take the Jacobian determinant. Um, the orientability condition is so that um, we have good coordinates and compatible with good, good trivializations. Um, so then uh, this weighted count of the R planes 
has to always be equal to um, the answer over C plus the answer over R over 2 plus, times 1 plus um, the answer over C minus the answer over R over 2 um, uh, minus 1. So where So where EC is the Euler number of the vector bundle V's C points, and ER is the Euler number of the vector bundle's R points. So where, so where EC equals Euler number, it's a, it's a characteristic class pushed forward. It's the answer over C, Euler number of the C points of V over the C points of Grassmannian. And the uh, ER is the same thing for the R points. Um, sometimes there aren't great, to my knowledge, closed term uh, uh, solutions uh, for EC and uh, ER. Uh, Mark Levine did the case of lines on a hypersurface. Stephen McKean has a beautiful Bazoo theorem. Uh, um, uh, Sabrina Pauli did a dynamic intersection for the quintic threefold. Um, uh, uh, a case of this result. Um, and as an example that's explicit, we can use calculations of Finesh and Karlamov over R um, and get 160,839,1 plus 160,650 minus 1. I think this is the largest number I've ever written in a paper. Um, three planes in a seven dimensional cubic hypersurface. Um, uh, this was taken, the ER was from Finesh and Karlamov, and their uh, paper gives lower bounds. So an application of doing any of these things is that you get lower bounds for number of real planes. This gives lower bounds. for the number of real uh, three planes in a seven-dimensional cubic hypersurface. So lower bounds for the number of real R planes in a complete intersection. Because again, the, the complex points aren't going to contribute anything to the sum, so you've got some sum of some ones and minus ones has to be the difference between that and that. In particular, you've got to have some, some real planes. So uh, sorry to, to Jonathan, uh, Thomas Braselton pointed out that um, the, uh, the conjecture that was up here um, uh, asking if there uh, always had to be uh, real, real points on uh, conics through um, six points through the the origin. It can be set up in these terms. There's a, a nice paper by uh, Stephen McKean and um, Cameron Darwin and um, Gu and Galimova doing uh, conics through through eight points. But those are hyperbolic, so that's not that that approach won't won't help Jonathan's conjectures out in the most um, straightforward uh, way way to apply it. Um, but it it gives it, it does give lower bounds. There's also an open question here, which is we had. Um, like in Thomas's talk, some intrinsic to the geometry of the Ronsky map descriptions of how to give local indices. So it's open, largely, there are cases that are known, um, to give a geometric description of that Jacobian. Right? You know, don't just look on the Grassmannian and take a bunch of derivatives, but you had an R plane in a complete intersection. What is the spinning around the tangent line? What is the internal geometry of the R plane? Um, uh, uh, giving you to tell you um, whether to, to count what, what what bracket A should we put into our weighted count? So it is open. So 
open problem, I compute this Jacobian in terms of the geometry of the plane sitting inside X. W, it's an R plane inside a complete intersection inside Pn. And the known cases, we just discussed um, uh, cubic surfaces. And um, uh, McKean did Bazou's theorem. And Sabrina Pauli did the quintic threefold, uh, building off. Um, uh, paper of Finesh and Karlamov, and then Pauli um, Felipe, with Felipe Esper um, uh, uh, S. Priafico did lines in degree in degree 2n minus 3 um, hypersurface. Um, uh, but in general, there should be a description. It should have something to do with spin um, of, of, of how, what, what those are, um, how, how are we waiting, how are we waiting planes. Now, you'll notice that uh, we didn't produce any new fun numbers yet because we combined the numbers over R and over C. Um, but that's not actually what always happens in A1 enumerative geometry. That's just uh, a result of these, of Grossmannians being defined over Z. But um, more generally, yeah, that, <laughs> precisely. Um, but not all problems are defined over the integers. And so it, it's not true that you get no new numbers. You get a lot of new fun numbers. Um, so remark, um, it is not always the case. case that A1 enumerative results are of the form uh, A times 1 uh, plus uh, B uh, times uh, minus 1. For example, the, the, uh, in, in Thomas's talk, we saw cubics going through um, uh, eight uh, points. So um, let's let, uh, so keeping, keeping Thomas's notation, let's let n p 2 d be the number of degree d plane curves, rational, sorry, number of rational, the maps from p1, degree d plane curves through interpolating through generally chosen 3D minus 1 points. Um, so um, uh, there is an, um, uh, an A1 enrichment of this number that goes between the Velshin J invariance from the last talk and, the, um, and the, the N. And so for example, um, there are uh, two one um, plus uh, minus one plus two plus 14 um, plus, so that's four, six plus another six, yes, um, plus six, one um, degree three rational curves. Uh, <laughs> degree three rational curves, plane curves, uh, through generally chosen um, eight points, but those eight points are chosen so through six rational points, k points, and a conjugate pair of um, defined over k adjoin the the square root of seven. 
and then the, the problem's not defined over z, and you, you don't get an answer, which is um, 1 plus um, minus 1. Uh, so, Thank you. Um, the, uh, um, we get uh, an enriched count of rational curves on surfaces more generally. So um, uh, joint work with um, Jesse Cass, Mark Levine, and Jake Solomon. is that over any field, so let K be a perfect field, of characteristic not two or three, um, let S be a del Pezzo surface, e.g. P2, but cubic surfaces blow ups of P2 at less than or equal to nine points, they're twists, but let S be a del Pezzo surface, with enough hypotheses, we can take it down to two, but for to make this uh, formulation simpler, let's just say of degree at least four. Um, but you can do degree three cubic surfaces, no problem. Uh, of uh, degree three, um, suppose S is A1 connected. For instance, rational K rational surfaces are all A1 connected. So there are lots of fun ones like the uh, Fermat uh, cubic surface. Let's fix a degree. We want degree D curves. So let, um, let D in uh, pick S be a fixed degree. Um, uh, and now let's run our curves, let's interpolate through curves, but we're allowing different field extensions. So they might be real and complex, they might be degree three extensions, degree four extensions. So we're gonna pick some, degree, some field extensions to let L1 through LJ um, be a list of field extensions, defining the right number of points over the algebraic closure. That, and the, the right number is minus the canonical class um, DE minus one. So this is. Um, uh, okay, we've got our surface, we've got our degree, um, we've got our points. Um, if the degree is three and you are in positive characteristic, you need um, uh, to exclude. Um, uh, well, you need to exclude multiples um, of minus one curves from the D. Um, there, there is a list of some geometric restric restrictions that they go away with um, degree equals four, um, and they're only in positive characteristic anyway. Uh, so that lives tons of characteristic zero fields. Um, but then the result is then there is a well-defined count, and it counts each curve with the Velshin J invariant, um, uh, the, the generalization of the Velshin J invariant. So then, oh, yeah. Um, for every, in characteristic P, you need, um, for every uh, component of birational maps, you need an unramified one. That may always hold, or the, the uh, components of the moduli space can get, uh, uh, large, um, but for degree four, what I wrote is absolutely correct, but I want to give some examples in degree three, so forgive me. Thanks. Um, so then there is a number in GW of K and then there exists an N A1 of um, S, D, and these points. 
um, in GWK, which is equal to the signed count, so such that for generically chosen, really points in a certain restriction of scalars, but if you're in P2 or a blow up of P2, uh, then you can say generally chosen P1, Pj, um, with field of definition given by um, the, our fixed field extension, uh, then the sum over the degree D rational curves on S um, through P1 through P1 through Pj, let's call our curve U from the transfer of K of U down to K of the product over the nodes P of the image of U, there's some nodes, and then of a mass of P, the, um, you have a node here, and in Thomas's talk we saw some isolated nodes or not isolated nodes, but the tangent directions determine a degree two extension of the field of definition. And if you product these all up, that's like taking a, a norm in Galois theory and it lands back in K of U. And this weighted sum is, is this. Um, and here are some examples. Uh, and then I, I see I'm over and it's the last talk of the day. So I will, I will stop uh, after um, just giving uh, some uh, examples. This is in section nine of the joint paper um, with Cass Levine, Solomon, and um, W. Um, uh, so we have examples. If you take the cubic surface x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus w cubed, equals zero, and you take it in the uh, minus canonical class, and you run it through two um, rational points, and stay away from characteristic three, you get minus three plus four minus one plus one plus three one. Um, and since it is late, uh, let me stop there. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions for Kirsten? Okay, I'll start with one. Um, I, actually, I'll, I'll make a comment about this last class. Knowledge that you have this enriched version of uh, the tangent, you know, the Velshan J invariant, is what led us to actually look at the Velshan J invariant with the rational curves that we were, that I was drawing when, when Thomas and I first met. Thank you so much. So, 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 so the last talk was inspired by by. By Thomas's inside knowledge of this result. That's it makes little, me very a very happy thing. mathematician. But it's yeah, it's inside. But but okay, so, so 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 I'm gonna go back to your, your earlier question. So now the, the, the uh, your work with, with Tom Bachman. So the um or Bachman, the um the Bear and Manival give some sort of way of extracting the the complex count from some you know, it's a it's a characteristic class count. Yes. Is there a way to extract the real in this in the same way? Yeah, it's a characteristic. Okay. So, so, so it's still so, the Euler characteristic okay. of the of the real point. Right. So 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 it's some it's it's some formula you have to pull out a coefficient and, and you don't want to really do it unless you have to. Right. Uh, no closed form. Um, for uh, except for some special cases like the lines on the hypersurfaces yes. where it's the, the double factorial yeah. and then in general right. not not clear it's got a closed form. Thanks. Um, I was also curious about this sort of Euler class type calculation. So, what about if you're if you replace p n by um, say well say okay I was going to say like a torque variety, but let's say a product of projective spaces, and you want to count like five you know planes of a certain type or whatever in it. Then you'll get exactly the same result, provably. Uh, it, so I am sure that um, with current the current technology, I think we could do that in in, in five minutes. Um, we'd have to check, but I think anything where you've got some good, you want a moduli space of lines. I okay, maybe I'm I'm going uh, a little 
too uh, bold and stupid. Uh, I just mean if you have a, a smooth proper over Z moduli space of lines in your products of projective spaces or your torque varieties, which seems rather likely to me, which is leading me to you know, promise things that, um, uh, then, then if it's an Euler number of something that is smooth and proper over Z, then it will be the, um, it will be in GW of Z, and GW of Z is generated by bracket minus one, and that means that after you apply the rank and the signature, you know what it is, and applying the rank gives you the complex answer, applying the signature gives you the real answer. I'll ask a quick question because Frank's question about Eckhart points had me thinking about this. But uh, if you look in the pencil of planes containing a line, you have five tri tangents. So I, I look at a, a pencil of a planes. Pencil of planes containing, sorry, on a cubic surface, I look at the pencil of planes containing a line, and it has a residual conic intersection that degenerates into two lines of five different points in the pencil. Yeah. And I'm curious Absolutely. if the, the pause points on these sorts of real things, if they're occurring at tri tangents, or if there's any connection between them. Frank says no. Thank you, Frank. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, mean, I, I think it's really a general honest way to pause. It's explicit. You, can, I mean, yeah. what, what the good does that do? Um, uh, I, I mean, I mean, for instance, okay, you have a tri, you you have a triangle. You get when you go, when you when you have tangent. So those two those two points on 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 your line while you're moving, they're going to be interchanged by your involution. Yeah, and so right. and so you go through. There are five points to get interchanged on your line, and it has something to do with how they interlace. I think whether at least at least if there's a lot of if, 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 at least if you have twenty seven real lines on the cubic to to see where. But I, I was thinking about that as a talk exactly this. So so what I was going to was the, so from what you showed this 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 I I think you know these two results on the last part of the board is that. <clears throat> You, you get some incredibly interesting arithmetic information when you have an inner problem that involves some arithmetic data as yeah. opposed to just general lines or general points or things like that. And that's, that's not, I think that, that's, I, I mean, I hadn't really appreciated that about this, about this, um, this technology you developed. Also, some people outside of your community seem to believe that nothing new ever comes of it. I, I've instance, heard that. Yes, instance, I know. The, the, it comes the, back the, to there, me there, too. There, there's a very, very big voice who was there earlier in the week who, who told me this last summer. And no. it's okay. He just hasn't seen enough math yet to see this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Frank. <laughs> it was yeah. your birthday conference, well, well, no, and you're well, making well, me well, feel I'm good. Actually, I'm, I'm, no, I'm actually really <laughs> glad to see this because I think this is an important point for people to take home about 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 this enriched theory. Is that it? It gives you arithmetic information about inverted problems where the imp, where the input data is arithmetic and not just R Z or, or, yeah. or C. Yeah. That's what's going on. That's really that's a really strong. I mean, this is you know when you first see this from outside, you sort of hope something like that. But this is a very strong, you know, this very strongly says that. Thank you. I'm glad I came today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for a great talk. Uh, I had uh, two questions. So the first, I might have missed this. You may have said this, but um, it's 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 for this theorem with. Uh, Castle and Solomon that you have it's it's makes sense why for you know degree one del pizzas I mean they're very goofy so like you can't do much for them but like can you do a similar thing for degree two del pizzas like, yeah I, actually we do have some results on degree two okay. um, uh, it's this the mm, orientation of an evaluation map on a moduli space of all the rational curves and it comes from uh, um, uh, looking at the singularities of the curves that you get, and so the, um, the determinant of the cotangent complex of that evaluation map is d cusp, the cuspidal locus, like plus a square, but to be able to say that, uh, yeah, you yeah. want to get rid of huge components that have very wild cusps and tachnos, and so you want to be able to say that you don't have gigantic components of a compact, so you want a proper map. You don't want gigantic mm, components of this um, moduli stack. Mm -hmm. And uh, in order to do that, there's some explicit geometry that happens um, with the Del Pezzo's in question. And you can imagine 
a, a stronger theory with a lot of virtual fundamental classes and spin structures uh, and uh, uh, better ways to, to define such invariants, at which point, hopefully, uh, such discriminations, I mean, <laughs> conditions, such discriminating against those degree two del pezzos um, will, will, will also leave, I hope. And I, I guess this very recent ish work in like compact moduli of degree one del pezzos that's been happening is there hope of using the geometry of their moduli with complex numbers to extend something like this in that setting? If it, anytime you know the ramifications, the determ this, this determinant of the cotangent complex, if you could compute ramifications, um, then you can compute, then you can at least define degrees, rather. Great. So, yeah, the more you know about a moduli stack, the more you'll be able to figure out about the ramification of certain natural maps that count various things, and that defines a, a one degree. Okay, great. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's thank Kirsten again. Thank you.